Good morning from Paris at Euro PCR 2014. I'm Simon Kennan, Editor-in-Chief for Interventional Cardiology Review, and I'm delighted to be here with Keith Oldroyd from Glasgow, who was an investigator in the PRAMI trial. Keith, can you remember what PRAMI stands for? It was a while ago now. Yeah, preventive angioplasty and myocardial infarction, I think. I think it probably <laughs> was. So this was, um, I think we both agreed, a fantastic trial run on a shoestring and published in the New England Journal. Amazingly, for a positive trial, it, it's got a bit of a beating in the press, I feel. <laughs> Do you want to just take us through what the trial was about? Okay, so the all the guidelines and still even post primary the guidelines still say that you should only treat the infarct related artery at the time of a primary PCI in a patient who's presented with a STEMI. And of course we know that uh, around about half of these patients have multivessel disease. So it's been thought in the past that it wasn't safe to do the non-corporate lesions at the same time. So the primary trial was designed to address that question was there a beneficial treatment effect from treating the non-corporate lesions at the same time as the corporate lesion? So it was a randomised trial of comparing corporate only versus complete revascularization, all done at the index procedure. And as I recall, about two and a half thousand people were screened and 500 were randomised, which for a trial is not, not a bad acceptance. Yeah, it, it was around about 450 randomised. The trial was designed uh, or powered at least for 600 patients, but I think as everybody knows, the, the Data and Safety Monitoring Board uh, recommended discontinuation of recruitment after 450 patients because there was a very significant treatment effect apparent. And that was based on pre-specified criteria? Pre-specified criteria based on the primary, the triple primary endpoint of cardiovascular death, non-fatal myocardial infarction and refractory angina. And the results were? So the results were strongly in favour of the strategy of treating all lesions at the same time. A very large treatment effect of around 65% in favour of that strategy. Uh, with, the, the, with the event curve separating quite early mm -hmm. within the first few weeks. And uh, you know, we think it's a, it's a potentially a game-changing result. And the primary outcome was positive, significantly different. And were all of the individual components, were they positive as well? So the, it's, it's a very uh, important sort of biological concept to see all three components of the triple endpoint going in the same direction. That's exactly what happened in PRAMI. So uh, cardiovascular death and non-fatal MI together were also significant. Cardiovascular death on its own didn't quite meet statistical significance with a p-value of 0.07. But the actual magnitude of the treatment effect was the same for each component of the triple endpoint. Okay. Go over this early termination of yeah. trials issue. So most trials have a data safety monitoring board and there usually is a stopping rule based on let's say a p-value of less than 0.01 mm -hmm. or 0.001. So um, in, in PRAMI that, uh, stop, that criteria were met and the DSMB felt compelled to recommend discontinuation of the trial. Now of course it's a recommendation but you know, we, we, we decided to go along with it. I think there is an argument to be made for only using mortality as a stopping rule in order to avoid premature discontinuation because there is a general thought that stopping early exaggerates the treatment effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what do you think the mechanism of these results is? So that, that is That's a, obviously a question you've had to answer a few times. That, that is a great question, and I, I don't think we know what the mechanism is, but I think we can say a few things. First of all, it could be relief of uh, ischemia. Mm -hmm. So these non-corporate lesions may be contributing to ischemia. And in fact, although it's not published in the original manuscript, there is a relationship between stenosis severity and event rate in the patients who were randomised to uh, corporate-only PCI. So that's an interesting yeah. uh, finding. Now, to prove that, I think we would need to rerun the trial and use 
physiological guidance mm -hmm. in one arm. So fractional flow reserve guidance in one arm to prove that these lesions were actually ischemic. Of course, it could be that what we were doing was stabilizing or sealing uh, non-culprit but nevertheless vulnerable plaques, some of which may not have been flow limiting, in which case it's possible that physiological guidance may not improve the outcome. So either way, a second trial with FFR guidance in one arm, I think is definitely required now. And is that planned? It's planned and we are, as usual, trying to get the funding together to do it. Excellent. Okay, final question. How has this changed your practice? Well, uh, interestingly, we've just conducted a survey of under, just under 300 interventional cardiologists across the UK, the USA, Australia, New Zealand and Switzerland. And we found that only 15% of respondents said that the primary trial would change their practice. So I guess this is an example of resistance to change. But on the other hand, you could say, well, it's only one trial, it's only 450 patients. In our own institution in Glasgow, where we, we, we do about 700 STEMIs a year, most of our operators will do the non-culprit lesions at the same time as the culprit, assuming that the, the culprit lesion result is good and that it's logistically feasible. Mm -hmm. And reasonably straightforward? Yeah, I, I think, to be fair, you know, most of the lesions that were randomised in PRAMI were relatively straightforward PCIs. We're not taking on super complex calcified bifurcation lesions in the middle of the night. Yeah, agreed. Excellent. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.